everybody. It's Mad Fury from Avid here at NAB 2012. One of the great things about NAB is you just never know who you're going to run into. Unless, of course, you do know who you're going to run into. And it's my dear friend, Kevin Tent. Kevin, it is great to see you again. Good to see you too, Matt. Now, uh, this is, you haven't been at NAB in a while. This is like the first one in five years. What have you seen here that's just knocked you out? Well, first of all, just walking into the whole place, the scale, the, the, the size of all the booths and the, just all the people and all the colors, it's kind of overwhelming. I feel uh, like there's a, it's disorienting almost. For a guy that's edited at George Clooney's Lake Como Villa, I don't know how you could be uh, <laughs> stunned by anything. And I should, I should point out to our folks at home, Kevin, Fantastic editor. Uh, you know him from such brilliant work uh, from Alexander Payne, like Election, Sideways, About Schmidt, and of course, The Descendants, which, Kevin, you were nominated for an Oscar. What happened with that? It was a great, great honor and a great thrill, and uh, I still can't believe it. It was, uh, you know, you work on the movie, and you, I loved it, and I was so happy to be working on it, and we had such a great time working on it. But then when it comes out and it's so well received, it's just basically icing on the cake, and uh, and then and then and the and the, all the fun just got relived again when we when uh, it got nominated for its awards and the award season came out, and when it got such good reviews, and uh, yeah, and then um, it was a great honor to be nominated for an Academy Award. Now you've been working with Alexander since uh, Citizen Ruth, I believe, is the first film. Um, so obviously, this is, I won't say old hat between the two of you, but you have a, a, a great working relationship. When he's ready to start up a film, what's, what's the process like? Will you talk us through you know, that phone call from Alex or Alexander all the way through to the final edit? I know that's a big thing, but see what you can do. Okay, well, the, the real quick thing is, is that he is, uh, he's very collaborative, and he'll send the script. As soon as he has his draft that he's happy with, he'll send the script, and I'll read it, and generally... You know, generally it's in pretty good shape, and uh, but you know, if I say if there, if it seems like there's scenes that are repetitive or anything like that, um, I'll mention it to him, and and uh, you know, often he goes, yeah, yeah, I know, but we're going to shoot it anyways, and you know, so anyways, then then he goes off and starts uh, getting in pre-production, and then when they start shooting, I start editing, and um, I usually have an assembly about a week or so or two weeks after they're done shooting, and he comes back to the cutting room. And we used to watch the assemblies, but um, he found that um, uh, not very pleasurable. So, because, um, you know, assemblies are really rough to watch and uh, they're tough to uh, sit through for a director. So uh, what we do now is we start watching dailies when he comes back in the cutting room. He doesn't watch dailies very much while shooting. Um, if he feels he has a problem, he'll of course watch watch them. But, if, you know, as he always says, I was there when they shot it, so I remember. So. Uh, so he'll come back into the cutting room and he likes to rediscover the dailies fresh after being away for a long time. And we start watching dailies and we start roughing in the scenes. We'll go back and watch how I cut the scene originally. And, you know, and then we just keep evolving and keep working and get a f first pass of the f movie done. And uh, we usually screen our first pass. His first director's cut is really a pretty long cut. And then we really go in and start tightening after he's been through it one time. Now, a lot of the movies of his that you've worked on that I, that I listed, you know, certainly Election, Sideways, um, they have Alexander's sense of humor. They're, they're, there's a very unique uh, sensibility to them. The Descendants, that's a pretty heavy movie. Um, going into this one, did you guys have a conversation about how much you wanted humor to play into this and how, how you balance that out with um, the dramatic nature of the film? Yeah, that was a tricky one. Um, and I think that... Uh, you know, when, in the, even in the script stage, there was a lot more humor. And I think that he had been a little nervous about, um, you know, approaching such a dramatic subject. And uh, so I think he was relying on some of the humor to, to counter that and then also to keep it from getting too melodramatic. But um, the humor really, we really trimmed it way back because it sort of started to feel forced in some places, and it also felt sort of um, insensitive and disrespectful to the to what the characters were going through, and nothing would turn off an audience quicker than that. So we really brought, uh, not really, but we brought back the, the, the comedy quite a bit and, and allowed the, the uh, drama to play, take the front seat. Yeah, when I saw the film, and we talked about this early on, one of the things that struck me was that, you know, being such a heavy dramatic piece, um, I think the term I used was you had a lot of air to work with. I would watch these scenes, and 
it wasn't so much being impressed with where you cut but where you didn't. Was this a little harder to do just based on the fact that there was so much emotion and a transference of emotion between characters in any given scene? Yeah, we definitely, we definitely, well, there's a couple things about it. He also, you know, he's so good at capturing a place. And, and I think that you actually feel like what it's like to be on Hawaii when you're there. Things are a little slower. People, you know, take their time. It's just a little more languid than, than let's say, Los Angeles or New York. And, um, and so I think that, that he lets, I don't know how he does it, but, and he did it with Sideways, too. You really felt like you were the central coast of California when you, when you watched that movie. And um, so I think he directed it even in the, um, while shooting, he, he definitely directed it as a, so, sort of a slower paced movie. And then in the editing room, we definitely had to allow emotional beats and, and transitions to happen. So it is, it is a slower paced movie um, for sure. Um, did I answer that question? I, I, would, I would say you did. Uh, Interesting thing about Alexander Payne is, is okay, he's a, he's a director, but he's also a writer, yeah. or he's adapting another written work. And they talk about editing being as the final rewrite. Yeah. Is that, when you're working with a director that's also the writer, is that a little more challenging for them to sort of um, you know, let go of their babies, for a matter of speaking? Um, he has that, sometimes he has that uh, issue, but he's also a really good editor. Um, so he... Um, he knows uh, if something's not working, and he'll hang on to it for a long time, hoping that we can figure out a way to make it work. And it, but if we can't, and he sees it's hurting the picture overall, he's pretty good about letting it go and cutting, just cutting stuff out. Now, as a writer, he must have appreciated the fact that I think this is the first time um, on a film that you used uh, the script sync feature in Media Composer. Do you find that helped uh, your dialogue with him about where you need to cut and things you needed to do? Well, uh, he loved it when I, because he has not used it before. I had used it one other time, or maybe twice other, two other films. But my God, he loved it. And he would show it to people when they'd come in. He goes, look, you guys, look at this. You know, and he'd show the, the, the script uh, sync tool. And, uh, um, and it worked really well for us because we're very big on performance choices. And we would often go back and relook at all our takes of, you know, a scene and re re-examine them and make sure that we had the best one, best performance, and that they all matched from cut to cut. But so in the, the script sync worked great for that, so it was genius. I think a lot of people look at a feature film, certainly a dramatic feature film, and think, okay, there's really not a lot going on in here instead of the cuts and the dissolves. But from my discussion with you earlier, it sounds like you were using other tools in the media composer that you wouldn't think were at play to really change performance and change the pacing of a scene. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, we used, um, well, we, I've gotten into the habit of doing comp shots a lot, which perhaps is a bad habit, but I can't help it, and, uh, and speed ups and slow downs, and we did use a lot of those through, through the film. Um, and they're, they're and great tools. I mean, oh my God, they're, they're, and I rely on them very much uh, to this day. Yeah, and there was a, a very specific scene that you oh, yeah. said um, that you use these on, I think it's, the, it's sort of the climax of the film. It was the, to make the transition, if, if people remember the movie, it's when Judy Greer leaves the room uh, after she's yelled at his wife, and it's basically right before his goodbye to the, the wife, wife. The wife's in a coma. The wife's in a coma, yeah, and he's going to say goodbye to his wife. So he turned from the door as, as she leaves, and he exhales and turns, and we slowed down the shot, and we even comped. We had to do something with the curtains. I think they moved or something like that, so we had to do a comp and a slowdown to hold his beat as he looked at his wife. Then when we cut around to the wide shot of the room of him there, we slowed that down to make it see, to really let him stand there for as long as we possibly could. And we actually also comped his eyes uh, just so they didn't look around or didn't blink, I can't remember. Um, so that he just looked at her for a really long time before he stepped towards her. Now I was, I was teasing you a little bit earlier about um, editing some of the film at George Clooney's um, Lake Como Villa. Uh, a lot of bigger productions, when there's a, an A-list star in a film, they'll have notes and they'll sit in the editing room and make comments. Did Georgia weigh in at all on your work on the film? No, you know, it's really funny. We showed him only one afternoon he came up and we said, do you want to see, see some scenes? He was like, sure. And um, he watched him and uh, he made a joke because his dog came in the room too and his dog went to sleep and he goes, uh, look at Einstein fell asleep, you know. So he was very self-effacing and very kind. And, uh, and it was very rough. That was our first, that was in a director's cut, so it was very rough and long and everything like that. 
Um, and then we asked him before uh, we left if he wanted to see anything else. He said, no, I'll see it when you guys are ready. So he was just great. So, so you know, that's obviously a very unique situation. He went from that to another, what I would consider a unique editing environment um, on the second half of, of post. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Amtrak? Amtrak. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so when we came back from Italy, we landed in New York, and Alexander had a couple business things to take care of there. And he... The reason, I, this is where the story, kind of, uh, how this came up, but in the 40s, they used to, in ho the old days in Hollywood, they would throw writers on the train and from New York to L.A., and they'd show up in L.A. and they'd have a script. And so he's mentioned that before, and this is where I think the genesis of this idea came from him. But anyways, we're in the cutting room, and he goes, uh, before we had left, and he goes, let's take the train back. We'll cut on the train. And we're, I was like, okay, let's try it. So uh, we cut for two days on Amtrak coming across the country, which was really fun. Now, would you recommend this? Did it really help? Or what was your, when it was all done, what was your overall reaction to the experience of cutting on an Amtrak train? Well, it's hard because the train really gets going. So you're shaking around a lot. And, uh, uh, but it was great fun. I'll tell you that. It was really a fun experience. And um, I, my, one, my one big takeaway from it was, and this was really true, we had, had dinner one night in the dining car and we drank a bottle of wine. And we decided we'd go down and edit just for a little longer before we hit the hay. And, uh, but you can't drink and edit on the train. You can do one or the other, but you can't do both. It's just with all the moving and, you know, your just delay, it was too hard to click. So that's my, uh, my big takeaway. Well, I think those are, those are words to live by. And no matter, no matter how you guys did it, the end result was something um, pretty special. That film, uh, very well received, your work very well received, and, and always is. And, and I have, you know, I have a tremendous affection for you and your work. And as always, it's a great pleasure talking to you. Well, likewise, and thank you, Matt. Well, there you have it from NAB 2012, my good friend, Kevin Tent.